All right, IED, we're going to be talking about activity 2.2.1, which is what is reverse engineering? I had made some videos previously on the uh, principles of ethics and the professional ethics, and there's a code of ethics poster that you can actually look into as well, too. The main reason they have those in there is because in reverse engineering, this is the process of taking something that already exists and trying to figure out the design for how that thing actually works. So you're trying to take something apart and you're trying to find out what its function is there are copyright issues that come into this. So is it illegal to look into somebody's design and see what makes it tick? No, that is completely not illegal. Is it illegal to take an exact replica copy of that design and then try to sell it and then make money? Yeah, that's illegal. Uh, and you'll run into a lot of copyright laws with that. So if you steal somebody's design and you start making bank off it, uh, expect for people to start questioning what you're doing and, and why, why you're doing it, okay? Um, and so uh, one of the big things about reverse engineering is the ability to look at something and to disassemble it and take it apart and try to find out exactly what, what all the materials are, uh, what everything is. You know, this is, this is the first part of reverse engineering is the ability to actually take something and disassemble it and analyze all of the parts together. So uh, that's what this whole first part of like what is reverse engineering talking about is the ability to to take something apart. And, and whenever you take something apart, you need to do it in a systematic manner. What I mean by that is if you're taking something apart, you need to uh, make sure that you know where all the screws are going, make sure that you list, list out all of the parts and lay them down. Uh, they have a video inside this uh, lesson that deals with taking apart a game controller. And what they want you to do is they want you to like identify what's going on throughout the, the video and they want you to describe like what, what do you think each part does? Like why is that part there? Because in engineering, if you're going to have a part there, it's got to be there for a reason. So you're not just going to like randomly add parts to it for no reason whatsoever. Um, it, w it would make no sense. It would cost more money. Uh, it would have no purpose. Like there's, there's all sorts of reasons why you would not do something like that. Okay, so reverse engineering uh, is a process that involves the study of an object's visual, functional, and structural qualities. Uh, reverse engineering addresses how things work and can provide economic advantages to businesses. Uh, reverse engineering is often used to inform the redesign of an object so that its performance may be improved. Uh, so, and there's a whole bunch of different reasons why they actually do this down here, but you, you can just kind of think about how that could actually be useful uh, in terms of just like not just stealing somebody's idea and seeing what's going on. Uh, you can also use it as a business to, uh, say, create a product and say you wanted to make it 10% faster or 10% better uh, in whatever way that you could. Maybe you wanted it to, to be lighter. Maybe you wanted it to, to do things faster. Um, so your ability to take apart those objects and to analyze them would make sense. And then a lot of people are like, well, but wouldn't I know what that already is? Uh, wouldn't I have already built that? And the answer is not really. If you're, if you're working for a really big company, they make hundreds of products and you may have been on one team designed for one product and get reassigned to another team that is working on this completely separate product. So if you get a new product, the first thing you're going to have to do is you're going to have to analyze it. So you're going to have to take it apart and analyze it and see exactly what, what all of the parts are on the inside. So even in teams and even in a company setting, the reverse engineering process is super important because you have to be able to learn how to individually identify uh, those parts. And uh, down here, they actually talk about the video. Uh, and they'll ask you to watch a video that talks about this game controller that is right here. Um, so they want you to kind of like start off and look at this and says, hey, what does the video game controller look like? Uh, and what are some interesting visual features of the video game controller? So it says, interact with the animation of a game controller from a popular video game system. To increase or decrease the controller size, point and scroll anywhere within the box. Jot down notes in the text below. Uh, you'll be able to see this in the uh, Project Lead the Way website. So uh, I've got mine just on Canvas right here. So I I've got a top view, a back view, a front view, and a side view so that you can kind of get an idea of what it looks like. Try to think of some idea, like some, some words that describe uh, this game controller. Like what does it, what does it look like? if you were trying to describe it. Um, there are several different 
words that can describe uh, this game controller in and of itself. And I don't want to ruin it for you because I want you guys to come up with your own. So, like, describe. What does this actually, what does this look like to you? Uh, what are some words to describe it? Um, let's see here. Label one index card, and, and if you're at home, if you're doing this digital, you don't have to do an index card. You could just do like a piece of paper. Uh, label in one index card with a heading game controller description and write a one or two sentence visual description of the game controller from the notes that you actually made from these visual details of this. So from the questions that you asked, make a one to two sentence description of it. Now, I'm definitely going to want y'all to do that. Um, the next thing that they talk about is the concept of abstracting. Uh, a system and the uh, abstraction is a weird concept because uh, it basically involves how much detail that you're thinking of. So abstraction comes in in levels. To, to use a lame Shrek analogy, think of it as like layers to an onion. So like uh, for a good example, like on the on the top level, like on the high level abstraction. So if you just look at this and you say, what is this? You would you would immediately say, oh, that's a game controller. Uh, but you're not really talking about specifically what it does. You're not looking at this and being like, oh, okay, well, there's two joysticks right here. Uh, there's four buttons right here. There's a screen right here. There's two handles on the side. There's four buttons on the left side. Looks like there's buttons on the back as well, too. There's a plug-in on the front that you can actually use to charge it. All of these things are getting less and less abstract and more and more specific. The opposite of abstract is... Uh, painfully specific and I'm going to definitely use the word painfully specific because a lot of people whenever they're starting to describe an object they they don't get to that painful level of being specific they just kind of look at this and and whenever you, whenever we first do this and I kind of show people objects you can immediately recognize usually what something is um, and you would say like hey that's a that's a game controller uh, or you would look at something that I would kind of show people and be like, oh, yeah, I know what that is. But then if you try to think about the, the less abstract parts of it, then as you go down in more specific levels uh, and you lose the abstraction, people uh, have a harder time coming up with, like, what those things do or even what those things are called. So, like, those different parts, uh, not even I know what all those things are called. Sometimes I'll call them thingamabobs or doobradads or something like that. I don't know. Um, so... Uh, next thing that they want you to do is they want you to on a, you can do this on a sheet of paper or an index card. Obviously, if you're virtual, you don't have to use an index card. Uh, label a second index card with three columns headed inputs, function, and outputs. Okay, record your observations from watching the video in the appropriate column on the card. So what you're looking for is you're looking for um, you know the different inputs to the game controller. Like for example, an input is something that goes into the object itself. Okay, what are the intention function intended functions of the game controller? So like for example, what what does that part actually do? So like the example that they give is does does it provide power? Um, and another one is outputs, and they don't have outputs up here, even though they talk about outputs down below. Uh, the output is what the uh, thing is actually going to be doing. So like. Uh, what does the thing do whenever you uh, using the inputs and the functions? So if it uses the inputs and the functions and gives you a, a reasonable output, like, for example, when you're playing a video game, like the game controller, the whole point of it is so that you can send information to the box. So whenever you push a button uh, and whenever you have power, that, that cord that goes or the wireless emitter that goes from the game controller to the console is sending out information that's an output so you push the button the controller sends that information sends that button press out so that is an output it's actually leaving the object it is doing its intended thing okay um let's see here i think from there um i think we're pretty good on this one to start with so uh this is what i'm going to need for you guys on the turn in uh, I'm going to need for you to view the video of the video game controller and look at the inputs, the functions, and the outputs and label them out as best you can, okay? That's what I need you guys to do for this one. I'll link a video for that in Canvas. You can also find it on the Project Lead the Way website. Um, but I hope you guys have a great day, and we'll talk later.